I mean, first things first, where's the bow tie, man? I mean, <laughs> the shirtless bolts and oxy back here. I mean, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> it's funny, I didn't bring my suit, but I bring the bow tie. So, uh, yeah, I should have bring it. That would have been uh, actually funny. That's my thing, isn't it? Uh, I left that alone. What do we do? Hey, well, everybody coming to this fight was expecting a war. We got a war. Give me an idea of kind of what it feels like to go through a fight like that and come out victorious. It was unreal. You know, I was, uh, I want to get the finish. I always want to get the finish, but, you know, they always give me these tough guys. You know, a lot of people go on there, you know, no matter how good you are, you know, it's going to be very hard to put Del Eric, uh, Darren Elkins away, which, you know, you know, no surprise, he was tough. But uh, that was me playing it safe. A lot of people are going, what, that's you playing it safe? Uh, doesn't look like it. But, you know, uh, as I was just saying, everyone out there, I tore an intercostal muscle just Wednesday night uh, wrestling. So, you know, I, I wasn't able to train the last few days. I was, you know, to be honest, Wednesday night, I was... Uh, the, the boys left, uh, this was while I was pretty sorry, I couldn't even get out of bed, I was sitting there crying at night by myself. That's how bad and serious I thought it was, I thought I bust my rib. Uh, the, the boys don't know about that, but uh, you know, I was told that, you know, the adrenaline rush would take over and I, you know, I'll just have to suck it up. And I did, you know, it, it didn't hurt too much in there, so no excuses, but uh, it just made me play it a little bit more safe. That's why I didn't want to throw the right hand as much, so I just threw a lot more jabs, as you could see. So I played it safe, whether it looked like that or not, but that, that's me playing it safe. So you're talking about Wednesday night of fight week, you were just, you were what, just light rolling? Or what? That, that bloke over there it was meant to be like, right, I don't know, you know, it was a, you know, you're dieting, you know what I mean? My body's uh, pretty fragile and, you know, we'll just go on a little bit live wrestling. I, I went, actually, I got on footage. Um, I went for an omoplata. As he was going, he went to pull back, and next minute, it just went pop. And uh, I thought uh, I thought that was a rib. It literally felt like the rib just caved in. Um, we actually got that on footage. I might put that up because um, I literally thought something broke. So, yeah, the doctor, the UFC doctor, looked at it and he goes, "Look, we're pretty sure it's an intercostal muscle." He said, "Don't do nothing. You know, even uh, wrestling or training, don't do any of that. It's just going to play on your mind. Uh, literally, you know, the adrenaline rush should take over. Just go out there, do your thing." And that's what I done. Through the first right hand, I felt I was like, oh, maybe wait till the adrenaline rush kicks in a little bit more, which it did, and then I'll pull through. That's why I, I tried not to push the rest. I felt stronger than him, but I was worried that I might, I might tear, the, tear the muscle a bit more, so I played it safe. So did you do cortisone shots or anything like that? Nah, well, you know, that if I did that, I would have had to go through the, the commissions and do all this, and I didn't want them to pull the fight. You know, I'm a family man. I, you know, I, was, I spent five weeks out of the last six weeks away from my family, the last thing I want to do is be pull, get pulled from the fight. Yeah. So, um, you know, the boys said the adrenaline rush will kick in, just suck it up. So they made me feel like a, a little bitch. So I'm like, oh, I'll do that then. But it worked out, it paid off. So what do you do? Well, knowing that, I mean, okay, so even without the injury, I mean, you were unloading on him in there, right? Yeah. And you knew he was a tough guy. Everybody knows the reputation of Darren Elkins. But is it frustrating when you know, like, you're in there lighting the guy up and he won't go away? It is annoying, yeah. But I mean, I think uh, most of the guys that I've uh, fought are like that. Mizuto, who wrote to how many times I drop him. Some guys, they're just you know, very hard to, to put away. Um, I rocked him a couple of times, but again, I'm usually a bit more persistent. And uh, I just did not want to go all out. Even when I was coming in, when he would frame, I was worried I was gonna you know, jam in and go straight into his knees. So I was like trying to move his legs. And it was just little things that played on my mind. But it's good to, to know that I, was, I kept the composure in there and things like that. As much as I fucking, oh sorry, as much as I hated uh, Playing a safe and getting the decision, what do you do? You know, at least uh, the, the, the crowd seemed to enjoy it, so that's the main thing. It was still a great fight. I mean, you wanted that breakout moment. You wanted to fight a ranked opponent. You wanted to fight in the United States. You did that. It was a great show. I mean, do you feel like you accomplished what you wanted to in this fight? Not really. I thought I could have finished him. But um, again, I had to play it safe. You know, that's why who, who thought a, a five foot six guy was going to use his jab like he did? I threw a lot of fakes and a lot of jabs, try to keep my distance and just try to play it safe. So I showed different tools as well as my aggressive sort of style. So, you know, look, I'm going to have to watch back the tapes and see how it went because, again, I thought that was me playing set, but everyone says I was still unloaded. I'm going to have to check back on that. Let me know what comes next. How, how long is this rib injury going to keep you up? I don't know. Um, the doctor said it's going to be pretty sore tomorrow, so we'll, we'll see how it is. But, I mean, you know, now I can at least nurse it. You know, I don't have to stress about it. You know, I was, I was literally thinking I'm going to, you know, throw one punch and it's going to go on me. Like, I had that on my mind all week. So it's just pretty stressful. But um, we got through. Fight in the United States next, try to get an Australia car. What's the plan? Hey, let's see what Chad Mendes does. Let's see if he gets that win. You know, I would, I would like that fight. You know, he's a big name. He gets a win. You know, they'll probably chuck him higher in the rankings. I don't know how that works, but he's coming off a sp suspension. You know what I mean? I don't know the case in that situation, but, you know, I, I'm a, you know, I don't like that sort of shit. So, you know, if he obviously got caught doing something, they're the guys I want. You know, uh, you know some of us are naturally strong. And some people are, you know, he got caught doing something. So that pisses me off. So I, I want him. So you've been uh, away from home for five or so weeks. Uh, yes. What are you looking forward to doing when you get home? Oh, man, I can't wait. Yeah, I've got two, two little girls. I want to get back home, give them a hug, and, 
a kiss and yeah, they don't even know about my rib. They had no idea, you know, I had to play, you know, everyone's talking to me, oh yeah, how you feeling? Oh yeah, good, good, feeling strong. You know, I've got to do this every time. I don't think I've had a perfect camp once in the UFC, but you know, I don't think anyone does, but literally it's, <laughs> I can't catch a break, but I mean, I'm getting it done. So, hey, I'm going to shoot for these ranks. I'm going to get good camps. I'm going to be one of the best featherweights in the world. Thank you.